Act 1. Scene 1. Phoenix's Apartment. It is the dark age of the law. As the number of police arrests continue to rise, the jury has been removed from the courtroom. Trials last no more than two days, and the burden of proof has been placed on the defense. Defendants rarely go free, and for many prosecutors, all that matters is maintaining their own perfect guilty record. But there are still some attorneys out there who continue to fight an uphill battle for their clients. Some who, above all else, fight for justice. Starting today, I am one of them. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Junior, Ace Attorney. Attorney. What time is it anyway? 20? Oh no. Alright, Phoenix, pull yourself together. You've been so many- Hang on, Chief. I'm coming. Forty minutes till the trial starts and I'm half an hour away. I've got the shakes, my body aches, my hair's in disarray. But I stayed up all night reading files so I know what I'm gonna say. I'm secure and I'm sure I'll endure on this August day. Okay. Today's the day I'll leave to prove I'm the best and the world is watching my inaugural test but am I truly prepared if pressed I'd confess I'm a bit stressed and scared can I bring justice to light can I fight I'll try, and if I don't cry, then I'll do all right. I can hope and dream and pray that I'll win on this August day. Uh, excuse me. See that man running like he's in some race? Pardon me, sorry. Spocky hair jerk, he almost ran through. Watch it. I think he's part of that big murder case. I'm a thrill. Sure looks guilty to me. Today's the day my paycheck comes in the mail. You won't need to borrow bus fare from the guys in jail. That's right. Those with our authority must maintain the peace in our society. Maggie, hmm? you see, there's been something on my mind. Well, what? I, uh, well, you look nice. Thanks. How kind. This modern world needs our best, our finest. Have no time to rest. Another day, another chase. Ensure another winning case. Mr. Payne, yes. a word, please. I'd like to be quite clear. Yes. Your career is on the line in court today. <gasps> my career? Don't worry, sir. I'm sure that I can get that guilty verdict. No more failures. When you prosecute, you must learn to be perfect. Phoenix Wright, you're late. So sorry, Chief. Sorry doesn't cut it in a murder trial. Mr. Butts is counting on you. Uh, are you going to be okay, Wright? I have to be, for Larry's sake. Ever since we were kids, he's been, well, unlucky. As the saying went, when something smells... Guilty! It's usually the butts. I'm guilty, you hear? Put me on death row! Life not worth living without my Cindy! The Cleopatra to my Mark Antony! The Juliet to my Romeo! The Padme to my Anakin! Larry, didn't they all die? Nick! Um, Mr. Butts? My name is Mia Faye. I'll be helping Phoenix defend you as his co-counsel. We should clear up a few things before court. What were you doing on the day of the murder? I went to her apartment, Cindy's, but she wasn't there, so I left. Was she expecting you? Well... You were dumped. Again. Hey! She didn't dump me. She was just taking a break from me. Forever. Things could get ugly in there. Your client clearly has a motive for murder, and I heard the prosecution has a key witness. But as long as you believe in your client, you'll be okay. Ready, right? Yes, Mia. Uh, I mean, Chief. Good. Now buckle up, Buttercup. The courtroom war is about to begin. 
Stand tall and face all your fears one by one. Don't get too rattled. Your battle has just begun. So will this phoenix take flight off the ground? I'll soar with glory. My story will be renowned. Now let's get this try. The judge sits and bangs his gavel. The crowd and Larry are seated, while Phoenix, Mia, the prosecutor Winston Payne, and the bailiff Maggie Bird remain standing. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The defense is ready, sir. I, I mean, your honor. Uh, allow me to s summarize our defense against these chase baseless charges. Our defendant, Mia, Mr. Larry Butts, was simply in the wrong place at the right time. Keep it together, right? If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution is more than ready to prove this nervous rookie is protecting a murderer. I present to the court record this statuette of the thinker. It was found wiped clean of all fingerprints next to the victim's brutalized corpse. <laughs> Miss Cindy Stone was murdered in the darkness of a neighborhood blackout. But our jealous defendant made one mistake. He left a witness! Frank Sawat enters from the prosecution side of the courtroom and makes his way to the stand. He appears nervously over-eager. Sir, please state your name and occupation for the record and tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. I'm Frank Sawat, freelancer, and I saw the whole thing. This is it, right? But, but Chief, what can I do against eyewitness testimony? If your client's innocent, this testimony's fiction. Examine your court record for the contradiction. It's time for you to take control. The story's clearly phony. Present something to poke a hole in the testimony. I see. The witness is clearly lying to throw off your case so find a contradiction to rub in his smug face and after you have made your careful selection present some evidence as you read and yell objection i was selling magazines door to door when i saw that man suspiciously exiting the apartment he left the door wide open so i peeked inside and I saw a woman lying on the floor, dead! <laughs> Such a horrifying sight, I couldn't even bring myself to go inside! Her apartment's phone wasn't working, and I don't have a cell phone, so I had to go find a payphone to call the cops. He didn't go inside? That's probably the fastest contradiction I've ever heard. So, you've got to point it out! If that man tries to deceive, demand the court's attention In order to make them believe, you must create some tension How dare the witness tell a lie when there are lives at stake? Look him in the eye and bang your desk and press him till he breaks Hold it! You say you didn't go inside. How did you know the phone wasn't working? I, uh, you see, uh, the phone was on a shelf next to the door. Uh, I didn't go any further into the doorway. You're getting closer. Don't let him slither between your fingers. So, uh, like I was saying, I found her dead at 11.24 a.m. 11.24? That's awfully specific. Yes, well, I remember hearing the time. You heard the time? How did you hear the time? I, uh, it must have been on, uh, radio? Uh, a television show that announced the time. A TV show? At last, this case finally begins to unwind. 
You know what to do, right? Let's do it, Chief. When the witness is clearly lying to throw me off my case, I'll find a contradiction to rub in their smug face. And after I have made my careful selection, I'll present some evidence as my aid and yell, yell, yell. Objection! With growing confidence, Phoenix retrieves the thinker. Mr. Sawit, it is not possible that you heard a TV show the day of the murder. As Mr. Payne informed us, there was a blackout in the apartment complex during that time. I must have... Yes, I remembered it wrong. You're right, it wasn't a TV show. I heard the time from the murder weapon, that clock! Clock? The murder weapon was a statue, not a- And again, you are wrong, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon is indeed a clock, which says the time aloud. I didn't bring it up because I thought it was an unnecessary detail. What? You got this, right, Nick? Uh, Larry, I- Your Honor, the defense would like to request a recess to review the evidence. A few minutes should be enough. Very well. Court is now in recess. Yeah, I'm the rookie killer. Another one to bite the dust. <laughs> the judge, Maggie, Larry, Payne, Sawat, and the crowd exit, leaving Phoenix and Mia alone in the courtroom. Chief, I'm sorry. I've wasted all your time. I can't save Larry. I can't make a difference. Ugh, what was I thinking? He puts his head down on the defense's bench, knocking over the thinker. I think the time is 10.20. Uh... Right. Of course you can make a difference. Why do you think I chose you as my junior partner? I saw something special in you. Chief. Your friend needs you now, Phoenix. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Or doubting yourself. There are times when you'll feel lonely and defeated And throughout some trials you'll only be mistreated These assaults mean to deceive But before you take your leave I would like to share with you what I believe See, I've been there too and it's dehumanizing If you feel you're trapped, it can be paralyzing. It may shake us to the core, but throughout this courtroom war, I remember the ideals I'm fighting for. I fight for truth. I fight for justice. I fight for everyone to have a fair chance. And when faced with tribulation, I think of my own inspiration. He taught me to always hold my stance. I fight for men. I fight for women. I fight for anyone who aims to do what's right. So I chose this occupation, a dedication to salvation. For society, I fight. It's time for a turnabout. Think differently. Sure, we now know it's a clock. (gasps) Never give up, Phoenix. Especially against them. Some opponents are dishonest. They'll do anything to win. And that's when the true challenges begin. Just believe in your client and the truth will be explored And don't forget just what you're fighting for We fight for peace, we fight for order We fight with evidence, intelligence, and trust And we enter this vocation to prevent misinformation To aim for a verdict fair and just We fight for all We fight with honor So stand wholeheartedly
wholeheartedly and keep your goals in sight. And in times of desperation, defend with broad determination. The rest of the courtroom returns to their places. Phoenix flips through his evidence folder, easily finding what he needs. The court will come to order. Mr. Wright, have you prepared a closing statement? Right. I can do it, Chief. I have, Your Honor. The defense is prepared to prove, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the witness was the true murderer of Miss Cindy Stone. <laughs> Ridiculous! As we've established, the witness heard the murder weapon say that it was 1124. So tell me, Mr. Sawit, how was it activated? Um, <laughs> uh, that is... <laughs> the only way you could have known this statue was a clock is if you held it in your hand. He slams the desk with the thinker. <laughs> I think the time is 10, 20, 5. You held this clock, didn't you, witness? When you hit Miss Stone on the head with it. That's why you were so sure the murder occurred at 1124. The voice that spoke when you killed her was burned into your memory. What? That's... how... do you... would you... Mr. Saw It! You did see Larry Butts yesterday when he knocked on Miss Stone's door, because you had already broken into the apartment to do some freelance burglary. Am I correct? <sighs> saw It tears off his toupee in anger and throws it in Phoenix's face. All right, yes, I admit it. I went into her apartment. I, I was there when she came in, and she she just wouldn't stop screaming. So I, I... You hit Cindy Stone with the thinker. <laughs> Saw it foams at the mouth and dramatically falls to the ground. The crowd bursts into discussion. Order! Order! Bailiff! Detain the witness for questioning. Objection! This is badgering the witness! Pain trails off as the judge glares at him. Sawit is cuffed and taken away by Maggie. It seems Mr. Sawit will soon face a trial of his own. As for this trial, I find the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Court is adjourned. The judge exits. The crowd disperses, chatting among themselves excitedly. Payne mopes off, head hanging low. Larry goes up to Mia. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! Here, as a token of my appreciation. Larry produces another statuette of the thinker and presents it with a flourish like a bouquet of flowers to Mia. B but isn't this the murder weapon? Nah, I made two of them! His and hers, you know? She takes the clock. Why? Then I'm pleased to accept. Thank you. And Nick? Thanks a lot, man. Only a BFF would do this, no bono! Live long and prosper, my dude! That's pro bono! Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> when something smells, right? <laughs> That's Larry for you. But I vote him this favor ever since we were kids. Him and one other friend. Right? Would you like to join me for dinner tonight? I'll invite my sister Maya too. It can be your victory celebration. Uh, sure. Thanks, Chief. No matter the odds against us, I'll be there to help you fight. So force a grin and don't give in, and one day we'll make it right. See you tonight! I... I did it. I actually did it! I won it, I still can't believe it. In this world it's tough to excel. But if I have faith, I'll achieve it. If I just trust my clientele, challenge everything contradictory, I realize what knowledge is worth. I know now the sweet taste of victory. I know this trial is my rebirth. Here I 
camp, court and trial behind me. Here I stand, ready to face a new day. And with each passing hour, I'm alive, I'm empowered, I feel that nothing can stand in my way. Here I go, ready to tackle the next case, and who knows if this is all just a dream. But if so, let me sleep, or I'll start counting sheep to prevent a rude awakening. Here I am. When my darkest fears came true, I thought my career was through, and this wasn't meant to be. But Chief helped me to rebound, and I turned the case around. I owe her this victory. Mia Fey's the one who helped me through this battle. This victory is shared between us, it's true. And as long as she's there, she'll assuage my despair and help me through. Me and Chief, a team about to turn over A new leaf, and we will gladly stand tall And with her by my side, standing firm as my guide I feel pride, and I know I won't fall Now maybe I'm a lawyer after all Here I am, Chief You ready to go? Chief? <laughs> Who's there? What happened? She's dying! Help her! I don't... I don't know what to do. Whoa! Everyone freeze! You're both suspects of murder! Who are you? Homicide Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? We're investigating a little tip we got from the hotel across the street, pal. Don't neither one of you move an inch. Whoa, what's this? Maya, huh? This name means something to either of you? It's my name, sir. What? Oh. It's all coming together now. A message in blood. Written with the victim's last ounce of strength. Case closed, pal. You and I have got a date downtown. What? Let me go! No, I'm not the killer! Help me! Help me, please! <laughs> Where am I? I please wake me up from this nightmare. Here I lie, no one can answer my call. I'm asleep. It's not true, Chief. I'm lost without you. How can you call this justice for all? Maggie walks next to Phoenix expectantly. Phoenix realizes she is there, slowly stands up, and walks out with her. Lights fade. Scene 2. Prosecutor's Office. Miles Edgeworth sits at his desk, perusing a file. Winston Payne hesitantly enters. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, you asked to see me? That's Prosecutor Edgeworth to you, Winston Payne. A title for which you seem to hold no respect. Not even for yourself. Five cases this quarter, all of them losses. The rookie killer indeed. Uh, sir, I prepared my case as best I could. I was ready to- Save your breath. I have no need for excuses. And I am not the one to whom you'll have to explain yourself. No, please! You're not reporting me to... him! I must. You're aware of his stance on such matters. I'd hate to be in your place, Mr. Payne. You may go now. Guilty convictions, no matter the cost. That is the role of the prosecutor. Keeping the peace in these dangerous times is the sacred decree we must heed. 
Mr. Edward, sir? Ah, huh. yes? I've got the new paperwork for the murder of that lawyer lady, uh, Mia Faye. Thank you, Detective. Now, back to work. The criminals out there are relentless. But so are we. Perfection is the life we lead. They exit. Scene 3. Detention Center. Maya Fay sits alone in her cell. Okay, Maya. Deep breaths. You've been alone in places like this before. Just pretend you're back home. You're meditating in the channeling chamber. She enters a Seiza sitting pose, locks her fingers together, and shuts her eyes. Head up. Back straight. Remember the smell of sage. I feel my chest tightening, my body's going numb, and this awful, rising feeling that I'll never leave this cage. But then... You were there to dry my tears. You taught me to always do what's right. So I know if you were here, you'd want me to stand tall and fight. So I will not hide from this pain inside. Though my mind is screaming, run away. Straight, you stare unflinching at your fate. Ignore the heartache somehow. Train your mind, devote your days, uphold the power of the face. But where are they all now? Mom disappeared before I turned three. But you and me, we got by just fine. Now you've left me to. With just a legacy I didn't want to be mine And I cannot be What they want from me With just a shadow of your skill You were brave and kind And you left behind Shoes that I could never hope to fill Level head and back up straight You stare unflinching at your fate You always knew what to do You chased your calling cause and creed To stand for all of those in need But didn't you know that I I needed you too <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here, despite it all. I'm alive, and you are dead. Even though the world would be better off if it had been me instead. I'm sorry, sis, but I'm not sure if I can be one anymore. I am not okay. Justice lost so much for fighting life. As Maya drops her head down, Maggie, the guard, clears her throat. <clears throat> um, you have another visitor. Phoenix enters and walks closer to the visitor's chair, not sure how to approach this. You're Maya? Who? I, we met in Mia's office, briefly. Oh, uh, you're Mia's partner. Uh, Phoenix, right? That's right. Phoenix, right. Uh, Mia said you were in town to see her? 
Yeah. I live up in the mountains, but Mia called me yesterday and asked me to visit for your victory celebration. She's talked a lot about you, you know. Really? You came all that way just to meet me? Well, it wasn't just that. Mia had hidden some really important evidence for an upcoming case and wanted to show me where it was. Evidence? She never told me anything about that. Where was it? I don't know. When I arrived at the office, she was already... She clasps the magatama around her neck. I see. I'm sorry. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what is that? Oh, um, it's a magatama. A stone used for spirit channeling. Phoenix stares back at her blankly. I'm an acolyte. A medium in training. These clothes aren't just a fashion statement, you know? A spirit medium? Ghosts possessing you and all that stuff? Yes. In training. Was Mia into that kind of thing, too? Maya smiles slightly. All the Fey women are supposed to have a strong connection to the spirit world. Even Mia. Our mother was the master of our technique, the head of our village. Wow, I never knew any of that. Does this mean you could channel Mia right now? Her smile disappears. Uh, I'm sorry, that was insensitive. No, it's okay. I mean, I want to channel my sister, but I'm nowhere close to channeling spirits on command like that. To be honest, I'm not sure I'll ever be. Maya, I can't claim to understand what you're going through. I was only Mia's junior partner for a couple years, but I miss her too. She always knew what to do. Sis told me if I was ever in trouble, and she couldn't be there. The only ace attorney I could trust was her old senior partner, Marvin Grossberg, but he just refused to defend me. Let me defend you. I mean, I'm no ace attorney, but I can't let you face this alone, and... And I can't just sit and watch while the one who did this to Mia is still out there. I know you don't quite trust me yet, and I know this may sound trite, but please... Please represent me. I promise please I'll make it right. Mr. Wright, the visitation period is over. You're needed back in questioning now, Miss Bay. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much. Maya and Maggie exit. Phoenix stands up from the chair and opens his briefcase, taking out a report. Edgeworth enters, his gaze perusing what looks to be a copy of the same report, followed by Gumshoe. Detective, while I am speaking with Miss Fay, please ensure the department receives a new copy of this. Now, just a minute. Maya Faye just signed this paperwork assigning me as her defense attorney. I have a right to know what you're asking. Edgeworth turns around to face Phoenix for the first time. The two share a moment of brief surprise, quickly masked by icy glares. My client. Well, well. Phoenix Wright. Defense attorney. Miles Edgeworth. The demon prosecutor. Well met. I wish I could say the same. Listen, that receipt with Maya's name written on it in blood? You think that was some kind of message from Mia, right? Obviously. It's rather damning evidence, wouldn't you say? Phoenix holds up the report in his hand. Well, the official autopsy report said Mia died immediately from blunt force trauma to the head. She couldn't have written anything, especially not in her own blood. Ah, uh, I see you're still looking at the autopsy report from last night. You say that as if there's more than one. Of course. There was another autopsy conducted at my request this morning. What? Edgeworth reads aloud from his report. The victim died of blunt force trauma to the head. Almost immediately. The victim could have written that message, and so she did. That's ridiculous. That's a perfect case. I've never lost in court, and I don't intend to start now. Hmm. Sounds like something the demon prosecutor would say. Perhaps. But back to business. Detective. 
Gumshoe responds with a salute and exits toward the interrogation. Edgeworth turns back to Phoenix. If you're intent on defending the girl, you should know that our investigation uncovered a wiretap placed in the Fay and Co. law offices. There will also be a witness testifying in tomorrow's trial. A wiretap and a witness? At least act, professional, right? The witness is Mr. Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. He was staying across the street at the Gatewater Hotel and witnessed the murder through the window. I'm sure you'll want to interview him. I know it wasn't Maya who did this, Edgeworth. I'll prove it. Say it all you like, right? No matter how hard you fight, you can't change the past. Phoenix watches Edgeworth exit. Phoenix then takes a moment, steals himself, and exits with resolve. Scene 4. The Blue Corp Lobby. Blue Corp workers walk by, reading papers, typing, and minding their own business. Phoenix arrives, taking in the scenery and grandeur of the offices, then moves up to Lotta Hart, sitting at a secretary's desk. Greetings, citizen. I am Phoenix Wright, defense attorney, and I need to speak with Red White immediately. Well, bless your heart, let me just roll out your red carpet, Spacky. Spiky? Yeah. Look, Spacky, Mr. White's a very busy man. You just park yourself right over there and he'll get to you when he's ready. Uh, thanks. Phoenix walks by the slightly ajar door of Red White's office. He starts to hear a bit of the conversation inside and listens intently, unnoticed by anyone else. Oh my, what a splendiferous painting you've donated to my collection. <laughs> Ah, yes, sir. A donation. Quite the priceless painting, dare I say. This should just about cover, uh, this week's insurement for you. This week? But so right. Oh, but then again, it's only a few months until DL Sixmas. <laughs> what an article it would make. A 15-year anniversary piece telling the world all about your role in that sad, sad affair. No! That is... I'll see you next week, sir. Such obedience! It's... I'm so glad we had this chat. Get out. Red White opens the door to his office, practically pushing Marvin Grossberg out. He addresses Lotta in his usual cheerful tone. Miss Hart, I do hope you're settling in well. Please validate Mr. Grodyberg's parking. Yes, sir, Mr. White. Red slams his office door with a self-satisfied air. Mm. What? What a girl? You're working for Mr. White? Nothing gets past you, Ace Attorneys, does it? Guess you should have paid me better. My cameras ain't gonna buy themselves. But, and anyhow, a news agency's a better gig for an up-and-coming photojournalist like me. But, 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 Sorry, Grossberg. He's even taking my staff. Grossberg brushes past Phoenix, but Phoenix catches up to him. Marvin Grossberg! Ah, jump the Jehoshaphat! Mia trusted you with her sister, but you refused to help. This is why, isn't it? The painting. And your secretary, you're being blackmailed! Shh! Grossberg pulls Phoenix further away from Red's office. You! You're Mia Fay's junior partner, aren't you? You shouldn't be here! If White found out! Huh? What do you mean? Mr. White will be right with you, Spocky. Uh, he drags Phoenix even further away. You're actually gonna confront him? Oh, my boy, I admire your spirit, but please, get out of here while you still can! No. I made a promise to defend Maya and find Mia's killer. Why don't you help me? Oh, I had your dedication once, long ago. But I cannot fight him now. I've made too many mistakes. So many bittersweet memories. Like the scent of fresh lemons. Grossberg drifts off into a daze. Ah! Phoenix taps him on the shoulder, snapping him out of his reverie. Yes, well, uh, perhaps... There is a way you might stand a chance. I've heard whispers around this office of a dossier of evidence. A list of all the people White has blackmailed, even driven to suicide. Do you have it? Uh, uh huh? D no, wh why would I? Because it's the last case Mia Fey was working on before she died! A Blue Corp worker walks past them as Grossberg speaks. Uh. 
Grossberg drags Phoenix as far away from Red's office as possible. The worker surreptitiously enters the office. Look here. Mia has been building that dossier against White for years. If it were made public now, his whole operation would come crashing down. She must have hidden it really well, or else his... connections would have found it already. If you can find it first, then maybe... Suddenly, Red bursts through his office door, staring straight at the two attorneys. Every Blue Corp worker shoots up to attention. Oh! Mr. Lawyer! I've been expectorating you. Grossberg bolts for the exit, only offering Phoenix a quick Godspeed! before slamming the door shut behind him. The Blue Corp workers, in tight coordination, come together and push Phoenix toward Red, until Phoenix is standing right in front of him. Red ushers Phoenix into his office. After you, my compatriot. Phoenix hesitantly enters. Scene 5. Lights up on Red's office. Decorated with many eclectic items, mementos of his dealings, including the Samurai Spear and the King of Prosecutors trophy. The Blue Corp workers stand in position behind Red's grotesquely shaped gold desk. Red is showing Phoenix a framed tabloid from The Blue Star, dated January 2002. The headline reads, PDLA puts up Spirited Case? And this, oh, this is the most esteemed part of my collection. The very article that put Blue Corp on the map. The soup du jour, one might say. <laughs> the what? Oh, pardon moi. Is my giant test vocabulary confuddling you? Perhaps I should start the tour all over again. That, that won't be necessary. You've already shown me everything twice, including the new secretary you're so proud of. Y yes Well, I'm certain this one won't be caught wiretapping. So naughty. Rare. Now then, uh, I believe I have some questions for you. No, I'm the one asking the questions here. Red stops, truly dumbfounded. <laughs> the worker's eyes start shifting nervously. <laughs> ah, you are an almond delight. Uh, let me guess, you're a lawyer fresh out of law school, am I right? How did you know? Well, that's the only explanation as to why you'd say something like... That. <laughs> Let me help you comprehend something, kid. Red White makes the rules. Red White throws the dice. Red White has the personas that makes everyone look twice. <laughs> Red White draws the lines. Red White deals the cards. People stop me everywhere to be trust me their regards. Hello, but Red's a decent man. With old-fashioned ideals Red will answer one question Cause that's just how nice he feels Okay, Mr. White, fine Tell me, what does Blue Corp do exactly? Ah, Blue Corp My labor of love My pride and prejudice Blue Corp intakes information We buy and sell it too You may not know, but Blue Corp It's named for the color blue Thought it up myself Red White gets the best Red White follows through Ask not what you can do for Red But what Red can do for you And what can Red White do for you, Monsignor? I'll count that last question as practice Now here's your only chance Make it worthwhile Alright There was one last thing I wanted to know Did you kill me a fae? <laughs> that is one magnificentious claim there, Mr. Wrong, was it? Now tell me, what are you really doing here? I'm here to change the world. You see this? This is Mia Faye's dossier on all of Blue Corp's illicit activities. If you don't turn yourself in right now, I'll be handing this over to the police. Gasp! Oh no! You've beaten me in my own game! <laughs> oh, how ironic, Kale! But before I'm carted away, just one more thing. Kid, I own the police. <laughs> <laughs> So you talk to Grody Bird, the rat just had to squeak. Ask him why I have this painting, I'll tell you why, he's weak. 
Only the strong survive, kid. In red, watch the alpha male. You're caught in the lion's den, boy, and you've brought my holy grail. Uh. Now let's see what Miss Mia left us. Where is it? Where's what? The dossier, man! Where is it? I won't tell you. It's safe, at least. It's safe from you. Now don't you come here trying to kick me off my throne. Let he who is with sin and loves it cast the final stone. Connect me to the chief prosecutor's office, please. And get the police over here right away to arrest this dangerous criminal. What? You got it, Mr. White. White, what do you want? This isn't a great time. Oh, Miss Guy! I've decided I want to amendify my testimony for tomorrow's trial. It seems I was mistaken about who the real culprit was. But Mr. Edgeworth has already prepared a watertight case against my- Quietude! I say it, I changed my mind now, didn't I? And I don't believe you're in any position to question me. And by the way, I want that dossier. Get it from him. No. Why? Because, uh, I can, Mr. Lawyer. I control this city all the way to the top. I am the law. And you? <laughs> You're nothing. A measly speck in a world of giants. It's funny. That's all me and Faye was, too. And now, I'm afraid I must do something Jurassic with you. Uh, a dance break! Uh -huh. All right now, big smiles just like we practice. Box step, box step, shuffle step, and sway. Plie, shut tight, frappuccino, crane boulay. Kick, ball, change, dab, direct, resonance. And kick, and kick, and I say kick, Penny. That's it, I can't even <gasps> out with you. What, what is going on in here? Oh, Detective, here is the fiend who broke into my office. He's the criminal you're looking for. Detective, please. Sorry, pal. Chief Prosecutor's orders. If you want something, don't riot. Red light breaks the rules. Uh -huh. Red light blows the dust. Sing it to me, baby. Red light has the power. So take red light cigars. But what you can't do Y'all come back now, you hear? Red laughs as Gumshoe drags <laughs> Phoenix out of the office. Blackout. Scene 6. Back in the detention center, Maggie escorts Maya out of her holding cell. What's going on? We're preparing for your release. So Mr. Wright proved I'm innocent? Uh, sort of. Since he's been arrested, you're no longer a suspect. What? But there's no way Mr. Wright could have- He's in there because of me! I, I have to do something! Maya tries to go back towards the cell. Maggie shakes her head sympathetically and pushes Maya gently towards the exit. Oh, sorry. Chief Prosecutor's orders. They exit. The scene shifts to another holding cell, where Phoenix is detained. Lana Skye and Edgeworth enter. Mr. Wright, my name is Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye. I'll keep this simple. Our witness is under the impression you might know the whereabouts of a certain dossier. Is that the case? No. I hadn't even heard of it before today. This is no time to be difficult, right? If you hand it over to the department or tell us what you know, the prosecution is willing to consider a more lenient punishment for your crimes. So the rumors were true. The backroom deals with the demon prosecutor. Right! I'm innocent, Edgeworth, and you know it. Now you're trying to get me to confess to something I didn't do? You've really changed. Sky turns away in annoyance. She says to Edgeworth, Just call me if he decides to talk. Then exits, leaving Phoenix and Edgeworth alone. Right. 
if you're telling the truth, if you really don't know anything, if you plead guilty, I can still try to get you a lighter sentence. A beat. Phoenix turns his back on Edgeworth and sits in the cell. I haven't shown you what I can do as the demon prosecutor. Just think about it. Right. Edgeworth looks back at Phoenix one last time before exiting. A spotlight on Phoenix as he is left alone, finally letting all of his emotions and grief rush in. It feels as though I've been here before, long before I entered the courtroom ward. I know the truth, but my hands are tied. I'm in the dark, for your light has died. What have I done? I let you die before my eyes. All I could do was lie there. Save the day, Chief Mia. I'm lost without you. Your guidance was the only way I got through. And now it's up to me to uphold our family name. But how am I supposed to do that when all they feel is shame? I was naive to think I'd ever rise to face what the future would bring. I thought that I could change the world, but I couldn't change a thing. Maybe I should just give up. I don't even know what I'm fighting for anymore. Maybe I should just run away. How could I even help? I'm not... Sis! No. No! I know better! This isn't what she would want. Even though I'm lonely and defeated, I won't allow our name to be mistreated. As long as I survive, I'll keep your idea. The justice you deserve won't be denied. Guard. Guard! Hey, are you alright, sir? You can tell Miles Edgeworth that I reject his offer. Tell him I'll see him in court. Things will not end this way. This fight I will renew. Forget what you were fighting for. What have I done? I saved Maya, I let her go free. Me, a spirit will live on in me. I can save the day. I'm alright, I'm okay. And with your with memory you as my light, it's my turn now to. Give in. I know, come what may. I will find a way. I, I will, will fight. fight. Like a man. On this August day. Scene 7 The next morning. Everyone but Edgeworth is in place in the courtroom. Phoenix and Maya talk quietly to each other. Thanks for coming to help me, Maya. I don't know much about defending, but you were there for me, Mr. Wright, so I'll be here for you, too. Edgeworth enters, causing them to straighten up. The judge bangs his gavel. 
Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fur. He looks at his paperwork closer. <clears throat> Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you electing to defend yourself? I am. Then this young lady is... Maya Fay, Your Honor. Sir, I'm... Uh... She's my co-counsel in this trial, Your Honor. Yes, his co-counsel. She holds up her hand for a high five. Phoenix reciprocates after some hesitation. I see. Do you have an opening statement? Ahem. <clears throat> I didn't do it. Is that all? Phoenix nods. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement. <laughs> decisive evidence. A decisive witness. Nothing else is required, Your Honor. Detective. Gumshoe rushes excitedly to the center of the courtroom, showing off the evidence as Edgeworth talks, a la The Price is Right. The victim, Mia Fey, was found near the window in her office on the night of August 3rd, dead from a single blow to the head. The murder weapon was a crude miniature recreation of The Thinker. Gumshoe places The Thinker on the defense's bench. Detective Gumshoe was among the first responders on the scene. We found the deceased and two others when we arrived. Mia Fey and the defense attorney, uh, Harry Butts. My name's not Harry. We immediately arrested Maya Faye because we found a receipt with her name written on the back in the victim's blood. The crowd murmurs in confusion. Of course, our investigation later concluded that the message in blood was written and planted by the true culprit, Phoenix Wright, in an attempt to frame the poor girl. Fortunately, we were able to arrest him once he was identified by our witness. Maggie escorts a totally blinged-out red-white to the witness stand. Please state your name and occupation, and tell us what happened. Red-white, CEO of Blue Corp. And may I say that it's so good to see you again, Your Honor. I trust we're still on for our meeting next week. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. This is bad. Now, let's see. I was perusifying my latest children's book, Red White's Excellent Adventure, <laughs> when I glanced outside and saw the whole grotesque affair take place in the building across the street. Hold it. What made you look out the window? Uh, why, the, the cacophonary sounds of the shattering glass light stand. You must have knocked poor Miss Maya into it during your pursuit. Phoenix bangs his desk, points straight at Red, and yells at the top of his voice. Objection! Everyone turns to Phoenix in surprise. He points to a diagram of the office. Look at the floor plans of the Fay & Co. law offices. Mr. White, you couldn't have seen the light stand from outside the window. The only way you could have known it was there is if you were standing inside the office. This is no time for jokes, right? The only people in the office at that time were the victim and the... killer. Edgeworth's eyes widen slightly as the crowd begins to chat loudly. The judge bangs his gavel several times. Care to explain, Mr. White? Oh. Mr. Edgelord, won't you call a recess for me? No, Mr. White. I agree with the defense. What? I do believe it's time you confessed. What? To wiretapping. What? 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 Oh, I, I mean, yes, of course. Allow moi to expandify. When there's intel to buy or sell, well, you can count on me. We'll find bombshells for our clientele, that's a red white guarantee. About a week ago, as the CEO, there was knowledge to be known. So away I go off to Faye and Co. to tip the tap a phone. You see, I saw the stand when I was standing there alone. I'm to understand that you're an honest businessman. Your story is this present trial's base. Yet you openly admitted to a felony you committed against the very victim in this case. 
All Red White's friends and Red White's foes are dazzled by what Red White knows. The stream of information flows because all folks have their prize. So Red White's been and Red White's seen, but Red White's hands are squeaky clean. I never harm a human being because Red White's just nice. Right, the truth is your toothless proof is a simply useless denial. Red White wiretapped, but this is a murder trial. So close and yet so far, how can we bring this murderer down? If Mia were here, she would turn this whole thing around. I'm sure the judge, the little nudge, sees I would never lie. Oh no. And he won't offend my dear old friend, the head cop on a sky. Seriously? I know them well, so you can tell you're sorry, Kaysa do. You are serious, They say right? okay to what I say, so what I say is true. Now you see the power of what a rat can do for you. Well, Mr. Wright, this testimony is compelling. Do you have anything to say in your defense? You fought admirably, right? But now it's time to admit defeat. Mr. Wright! You knew your fate, but you would not submit. Now you face the might of the prosecutor. There's more at play here than passion or wit. No acquittal will ever impede my perfection. It's the life I must. No! I'm not finished yet. That's right, Phoenix. Never give up. Mia? Chief? <laughs> it's just Mia now. But how? No time to explain. Maya's abilities are still weak, and I don't know how long I have. Her abilities... as a spirit medium? You're being channeled? Mia spots the thinker on the defense's bench. It's here! Phoenix, you've already won! She picks it up, concentrating on prying the bottom open. How? I can't prove Red White didn't see our light stand a week ago. All I have is this receipt with Maya written on the back. He holds up the receipt with the word Maya facing Mia. For the first time, Phoenix reads what's written on the receipt's front. Wait a minute. This means... Mia manages to pop open the bottom of the thinker and pulls out a wadded bunch of papers headed by a list of names. She passes the front page to Phoenix. The dossier. Yes. She turns to glare at Red, who is off-put by the woman next to Phoenix but can't quite understand why. You know what to do, right? Let's end this. Together. The lights shift back to the full courtroom. If the defense has nothing more to share with the court, I am ready to declare a verdict. Hold it! Your Honor, I have just one more question to ask the witness. Mr. White, could you read the front of this receipt for me? I suppose it wouldn't hurt to indulge you. Ahem. <clears throat> Adam. One glass light stand. No. It can't be. And the date, Mr. White? Mr. White? Ah. Date of purchase, August 2nd. The day before the murder. White, the only way you could have seen the light stand's shape is if you were with the victim on that night. If the late Miss Faye were somehow with us here today, what truths would she want to bring to light? Get Red White this parasite who's claimed so many lives. See it clear as day in this dossier of blackmail suicide. You got away, but then it's today you're gonna pay this time. Cause we will not rest till you confess to every single crime. Witness. Testify, this is the last time. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? With Take Red White's brain, Red White's player, that piece of paper, I don't care, because Red White's got the demon there who'll do anything to win. So you can hope that you can try, but sorry, kid, your wells run dry, and I don't need an alibi. Don't ask me where I've been. Oh, Red White's playing with Red White's gone. Look at Ryan all being his guard. Red White kicked his butt so hard, enjoy your time in jail. I want to love this turn that you can see your light. Turn from your blind eyes. Red White's got your penis for Princeton, Duke, and Yale. Oh my, it's me on time. Oh, Gee, I'm on the world. I can't be beat. I'm not going to go to the police scene. Sarah Toronto. 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 Sarah
Aaron Lowe, Elite Speed, Rick Smith, Rebecca Chang, Amanda Tan, Marvin Grossberg. What? Grossberg? Edgeworth snatches the front page of the dossier from Phoenix and stares at it, dumbfounded. The crowd continues to yell for Red's guilt. Order! Order! <laughs> hey, Judgey, uh, my, uh, my stomach hurts. There's simply no way I could continue in this state. Uh, how's about we call it quits for today? <laughs> Why, Mr. White? So you have time to make this evidence disappear? Maybe make me disappear, too? Edgeworth looks up at Phoenix, the judge, the crowd, and Red in turn. He looks lost. Your Honor, Mr. White's guilt is obvious. Every day he goes free is another day people suffer at his hands. The crowd is uproarious. They're on Phoenix's side. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid I must honor our request for an extension in this case. The crowd is outraged at this. Objection! Everyone is shocked by this outburst, not least of all, Edgeworth. Uh, yes, Mr. Edgeworth? <clears throat> the only individuals here who have the legal authority to request an extension to this trial are myself and Mr. Wright. The defense has made its position clear, and the prosecution is inclined to agree. Your Honor, I request that the verdict be decided at this time. <laughs> The crowd chatters in a massive confusion. But, Mr. Edgeworth, if we end the trial in its current state, then you... I am aware of the circumstances, Your Honor. And still, the prosecution rests. Edgeworth. Whisper, Red, your secrets, so promise not to tell. Red White learns your weaknesses to make life a living hell. Red would take your very bones to grind into his bread. That's not what Red can do for you. I confess! I did it! Did what? I hit Miss Mayo with the thinker. Case closed, Your Honor. A beat. The judge looks back and forth between the defense and Red. Edgeworth stands shaking at the prosecutor's bench. Of course. I see no reason to prolong this trial further. I pronounce the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright, not guilty. Court is adjourned. The crowd cheers, tossing up confetti and begins to file out, chatting excitedly. Mia slumps behind the defense's bench as Red is let out in cuffs by Maggie. Chief, you really bailed me out there. Phoenix sees Mia has changed back into Maya. Mia... Maya? Edgeworth shuts his briefcase too hard, prompting Phoenix to look up and get his attention before he storms out of the courtroom. Edgeworth. Edgeworth stops, but does not turn around. I... I don't know exactly what happened today, but... You're right. He spins around to glare at Phoenix. You've no idea what you've just done. The things you've put in motion. These feelings you've burdened me with. They serve no useful purpose. I... Don't... Don't ever show your face to me again. Edgeworth exits. Maya stirs awake. Uh, Mr. Wright? Maya, are you alright? Uh, what? Uh, yeah! Did you do it? Did you win? Yeah. Thanks to you. And Mia. He offers a hand to help Maya up, and the two begin to depart. And thanks to you, Nick! Uh, Nick? Oh, it's a great name! Mia told me that's what your friends call you. Phoenix glances in the direction Edgeworth exited. I mean, Larry does. They exit. Blackout. Scene 8. Later that day at the Fay & Co. Law Offices. It is still a mess from the night of the murder. Phoenix and Maya are in the middle of cleaning, dusting the glass shards into the trash, picking up the books that were strewn across the floor and putting them back onto the shelves, and turning Charlie, the potted plant, upright. Phoenix is leafing through Mia's dossier. Sis did say something about getting me a present. I bet she wanted me to take the thinker back to the mountains where no one could find it. 
And I suppose she never told me about it because she didn't want to put me in danger. Yeah. But you still risked the death penalty to help me. And Sis. I'll always be grateful to you for that. Well, I couldn't have done it without the Fae Sisters by my side. Maya puts the last big book on the shelf. There's an empty spot. Phoenix puts Mia's papers into an empty binder sitting on her desk. He puts the binder on the shelf, and it fits perfectly. So, Nick, I've been thinking. You're going to be taking over Sis's office, right? Well, yeah, I suppose I will. In that case, would it be okay if I stayed here for a while? In the office? Well, you know, I would work here. Oh, you're applying for a job. Okay. Phoenix grabs an application file and begins to go down the list. Let's see. Do you have any prior experience working in a law firm? Nope. Did you perhaps study some of the techniques your sister used? Not a bit. Do you have any knowledge at all about law? None whatsoever. Maya, I'm starting to wonder what exactly you can do for me. Oh, lots of things. I'll water Charlie each time you forget. I'd clean the litter if you had a pet. I'll keep the couch warm and never your god. What couch? And sometimes I may mow the lawn. What lawn? I promise your remote won't gather dust, and that your TV trays never will rust. I don't need gratitude or a high pay. You're Just feed me four meals every day. You're fired. And I'll be there when you need a friend. I'll be there to support you. And in the courtroom, I'll help you defend. Every time they outsmart you, hey. I'll provide a pleasant mood. All that we have, we can share. You lend your money, your home, and your food. And it's true that for you, I'll be there. Sounds like a nice arrangement, eh, Nick? Well, with I, me around, uh, you'll have nothing I, to fear. Uh, don't I'll be quite your know what to say. I'm a decent lawyer, nobody but fights on like a good day. My forte as a caretaker. Well, frankly, I reek. I had a goldfish and died in a week. I babysat poorly way back in the day. They paid me to keep me away. I can't see myself undertaking this task, but please don't think I'm a jerk. To have you around is the one thing I ask, and I've got. This is going to work. Now, wait a minute. Are you planning on setting up a tent in front of the fax machine? Or... Of course not. I'm not going to sleep here. That'd just be weird. I'll only be working and maybe spending my free time here, you know, watching your TV, eating all your food. That's not exactly sweetening the deal. Well, there is one other reason. This note. I found it in my stuff a couple weeks ago. Mia must have slipped it in the last time I visited. If anything should happen, take care of Phoenix for me. She knew how risky her pursuit of Red White was. So, she trusts us to watch out for each other. Yeah, and the truth is, when Mia passed on, I felt all alone and torn up inside. All hope was lost and I had no shoulder to cry on. Then you came along and I feel like I'm home and you're at my side. I deeply needed someone who I could rely on. And if you're with me, we'll make it through anytime and anywhere. I can stay strong and I'll show that it's true Just as long as I know you'll be there All right, all right Well, I'm convinced we can give it a shot Make sure you give everything that you've got So I'll see you every weekday at nine Now just sign right here on the line And I'll be there and I'll watch your back Don't despair, I'm behind you I need a tight one. Or I need a brat. I'll, I'll know just where to find you. you. Through thick and thin, we'll shine the light. A, a defensive, defensive powerhouse pair. 
okay you win you'll start tonight i knew that you would make it right for, for truth, truth and justice, justice we will fight and for you Now let's go celebrate with some burgers. Your treat? <laughs> Lights out on the new Wright and Co. law offices. Scene 9. The prosecutor's offices. Edgeworth enters, deep in thought. Guilty of blaming an innocent man. Is that the curse of the prosecutor? Before I faced him, I won every case. But now I have been shamed and disgraced. I knew we were framing an innocent man. Yet I did not dare reconsider. I was relentless in playing my cards. And yet somehow my hand fell apart. After Wright sauntered in with that grin on his face. Though he bluffed the whole time, somehow he won the case. And it pains me how one man so new to the law can incense me so much that it breaks my resolve. Right. I don't believe that man. Turning down my proposal, clinging stubbornly to some romanticized ideal, I... Mr. Von Karma. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, I have a letter that needs to be mailed. S sir? R of course, sir. Sir, about the trial today. A fool, save your breath. Avon Karma has no need for excuses. I thought I was doing a good deed for you, taking you in when no one would, instructing you in the ways of perfection. I believed you would be the finest heir of the Von Karma legacy, but no. It is clear you will always be cursed with the blood of your pathetic, romanticist father. <sighs> you may go now. S sir. I said you may go. Even though I've fallen. I can rise again. I admit I've made a mistake. But when a new day begins, I'll make sure that I will win. Yes, I'll do whatever it takes. Staunchly, I'll ascend to the top again. I won't let another go free. So this will not be the end. I'll stoke a new fire within. A personal renaissance in me. If the defendant is clearly guilty, then my methods, however extreme, should not be an issue at all. Right? Right? Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> um, Mr. Wright's not here anymore. Ah, right. Uh, indeed. Verily, I say. Ergo, did you need something, Detective? Oh, well, uh, no, pal. I mean, unless you want someone to talk to after today. It wasn't your fault, sir. Mr. Wright was really innocent, after all. How can we know that? Hm? How can we know that of anyone? You may go, Detective. But Mr. Rich... Please! All right, all right. Just... If you change your mind, you can trust me to be there for you, pal. One lingering...
Burning thought fills my mind, burdening me with anxiety. Have I indeed been so blinded with pretentious piety? For if I cheat in the courts, can I say with a straight face that I am a better man than the swords whom I prosecute every case? But no one should go through what I've been through, ever. Therefore, what was my role? Let it be my obligation, no, my responsibility, to condemn Every criminal earns their punishment. So I've always done all I could. What's the harm in filling in the blanks to some extent? If it's for the greater good. Frankly, some may doubt cases I have won. But I will still live by this decree that I'll do what must be done to capture the wicked ones, for this is demanded of me. I have gone above and beyond at times. Justice requires the extra mile, but right tries to moralize, refusing to recognize that I am not the one who is on trial. Right. Why can't you understand? I'm not a monster, I'm just a man! You might count me among the damned, but the crime shall pay is my only demand! You may find these contradictions, but I want more than mere convictions! You can't comprehend just why I take my stand! I fight for peace, I fight for order, so that all families can safely sleep at night. To stop criminalization, I shall pursue incarceration for security. I'll fight you until your spirit breaks. I'll fight no matter what is at stake, not fame. Not glory, but to end this purgatory is the reason I fight, so we'll meet again. Phoenix Wright! Blackout. During the blackout, we hear a single gunshot and a splash. End of Act One. Thank you.